In this episode, the World Health Organization has just released its report, and in it, they continue to call for the banning of flavors, open tank systems, and nicotine limits. We look at the connection between Bloomberg Philanthropies, his funding of NGOs such as the Union and Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, his donations to the World Health Organization, and the impact on policymaking in the Philippines and other countries. Harm reduction is an integral and accepted policy goal in public health, as seen with the COVID-19 pandemic, except when it comes to the use of safer nicotine products and the idea of tobacco harm reduction. The WHO released the Tobacco Product Regulation Report on the 5th of May. In it, they call for bans on all systems that are user-friendly, basically a ban on those aspects of vaping that make it so successful for smokers to switch off of combustible tobacco. Their justification is outdated science on secondhand exposure with claims that bystanders will suffer from nicotine exposure, cardiovascular and respiratory harm. The Surgeon General calls it an epidemic. Well, the FDA calls it an epidemic. Epidemic. The youth vaping uh, epidemic. The myth of the youth vaping epidemic, even though latest statistics show that youth vaping is on the decrease. They also continue with the myth of dual use, stating that in the United States, over 70% of vapors are dual users with combustible tobacco. These all appear to be direct narratives that have been previously promoted by Bloomberg and his web of advisors. We have no scientific evidence submitted to the FDA whatsoever that they're actually effective at helping smokers quit. By now, we are all fairly familiar with the activities of Bloomberg Philanthropies to control the narrative around tobacco control globally. We have seen it in the Philippines, India. The cabinet has given approval today to ban e-cigarettes in Mexico. Michael Bloomberg donates millions of dollars to the WHO FCTC for tobacco control initiatives and various NGOs that operate internationally towards the goal of banning safer nicotine products. If your kid was doing this and winds up with an IQ 10 or 15 points lower than he or she would have had for the rest of her life. Is that demonstrated? The, the science shows that it has a negative impact on brain development. It's hard to measure those kinds of things. What we do know is there's no question. There is a network of funding to NGOs that operate internationally and across borders to influence tobacco control policy and regulation to serve the interests of everyone but the health of the public. This influence is not based on sound scientific evidence or public health best practice principles, nor does it take into consideration local public health contexts. Shockingly, the campaign against vaping has been based on a mountain of misinformation and outright lies. Steve Forbes has called out tobacco controllers and public health officials on their war against vaping. These authorities are consigning hundreds of thousands of people to unnecessarily premature deaths. His comments are realistic, pragmatic, and hopefully will be considered. In the media, Mark Gunther is a veteran journalist, speaker, and writer. Since March 2015, he has been writing about foundations, nonprofits, and global development. In April, he wrote an article on Bloomberg Philanthropies and the war on vaping. In it, he outlined how people look at the work of Bloomberg Philanthropies and tobacco-free kids as an uncomplicated story of philanthropic success. However, Gunther outlines how Bloomberg Philanthropies used its money and influence to curb vaping without consultation of others who have worked for decades to reduce deaths from smoking. These experts say the ongoing campaign against e-cigarettes is misguided, built on unsound science, and likely to do more harm than good. The latest entry into the chorus of people challenging the near puritanical approach to tobacco and nicotine policy comes from Clifford Douglas, JD, formerly the American Cancer Society's Vice President for Tobacco Control. You should not trust the claim that vaping is a safe alternative to smoking. Exposure to nicotine from e-cigarette vapor does in fact cause lung cancer 
Douglas felt compelled to write a commentary after seeing a family member return to smoking from vaping because of negative media coverage. Douglas's plea to all advocates for tobacco harm reduction is this. Where is the robust focus on people who are suffering now and will die before their time because they haven't been given due consideration, have not been told the truth by those who should be telling them the truth about the continuum of risk and the fact that nicotine does not cause smoking-related illness and death and who are consequently collateral damage in this war between youth and adults a war between well-meaning and dedicated public service-oriented people and organizations on both sides, but one in which the leaders of both sides have been unwilling to acknowledge the legitimacy of science that runs counter to their narrative. As previously reported, the FDA of the Philippines accepted funding from Bloomberg Philanthropies to help develop policies around safer nicotine products. When this was admitted, many representatives and senators in the Philippine Congress were appalled and then called for an inquiry. So vaping is also dangerous and I am banning it. And if you're smoking now, you will be arrested. In 2019, the government proposed a ban on the use of e-cigarettes and other smoke-free alternatives. At the same time, the Philippine FDA was also receiving funding from Bloomberg to help develop this policy. The legality of this activity is currently under investigation. Could it be that the attempt to influence policy has backfired for Bloomberg? The House of Representatives has approved on third and final reading a bill regulating the use, sale and manufacture of e-cigarettes and vaping products. House Bill 9007 was passed with 132 affirmative votes, 34 negative votes, and four abstentions. On the 25th of May, the House of Representatives of the Philippine Congress passed Bill 9007 to regulate the manufacture, use, sale, distribution, and promotion of vaping, as well as heated tobacco products in a risk proportionate way. Once this bill, and Senate Bill 2239 are fully approved by Congress, it will remove any of the remaining vestiges of influence from foreigners, such as raising the age to purchase to 25, a ban on flavors other than menthol and tobacco, which was due to come into effect in May 2022. If this becomes law, the Philippines will become the first country in Southeast Asia to officially recognize tobacco harm reduction as a public health strategy. The philanthropists, public health researchers, and tobacco control policymakers who denigrate and discount our lived experience are unwilling and unable to understand. This is because they reside in a world of laboratories and theories. Real life cannot be replicated in that environment. And that is why it is so important that we all band together and make sure that our voices become part of the process. If you haven't yet signed our petition, please do so and share it in your networks on social media and beyond. Stay tuned for the live panel session that follows this episode. In it, we will take questions from the viewers as we discuss strategy going forward with our advocacy and how to address the disinformation.